On the shores of Lake Erie, the smallest of the Great Lakes, sits the city of Buffalo, the second largest city in the great state of New York, and it is an important center for light manufacturing, life science, higher education services, healthcare, and human genome research. Buffalo and the surrounding area is rich in history and home to over 2 million people who come from ethnically, culturally, and theologically diverse backgrounds. Here you'll find people of European, African, Hispanic, and Asian descent, as well as several tribes of Native Americans. Education in the U.S. is free to all its citizens. With a population of approximately 330 million, providing quality education can be a daunting task. But like tackling any large task, it's best to break it down into manageable pieces. So the federal government provides broad rules and standards, which are handed down to the states, who then interpret those rules and standards as they pertain to the citizens of the state. The state then divides themselves into school districts. Each district then takes the rules and standards passed on from the state level and implements them in each of the schools within the district. Against this backdrop, there are three schools that participated in the Building Cultural Bridges program. These schools are in districts that are as diverse as the students they serve. Cleveland Hill Middle School, for instance, is in the town of Chictawaga, which is just outside of Buffalo, and is in the Cleveland Hill Union Free School District. Though ethnically and culturally diverse, the student population is relatively small. So, this district has only one grade school, one middle school, and one high school serving a total of about 1,300 students. The Benjamin Franklin Middle School, on the other hand, is in the Kenmore town of Tonawanda Union Free School District, which serves a student population of nearly 7,000. The Benjamin Franklin Middle School is one of nine schools in this district. Then there is the Purcell Middle School in the Jamestown Public School District. Jamestown is in a rural community about an hour's drive south of Buffalo. This district is geographically large and has seven schools serving approximately 2,500 students. What is it like to teach in such a challenging environment? We ask four teachers to give us some insight into their world. Our system of education is really localized rather than federalized. So what a teacher is teaching, what I'm teaching in New York State English is going to be different than what they're teaching in Nebraska or California. Um, we have really rigorous stand standards, some of the most rigorous in the entire country. And so uh, our students take New York State tests at the end of the, the year. And our success as a teacher is dependent on student test scores, which puts a lot of pressure on us. It puts a lot of pressure on our students, um, which is not always the best thing, but sometimes, um, a lot of times actually, students rise to the occasion. I think American teachers are unique in the sense that we can have a say in what curriculum our districts adopt. And Teachers are able to join committees where they can have a say in what, you know, what we're teaching, what the lessons are, what the you know, topics and the units are. So um, instead of it being federally mandated, we have local input as to what we teach. American classrooms are becoming increasingly more diverse and um, American teachers are really trying to find new ways to, to reach students. Um, using technology, using um, you know different ways to uh, to communicate with students, you know we want to create global citizens, and we want students to appreciate uh, other cultures, and not only appreciate it, but but learn how to celebrate those cultures, and um, you know step outside from themselves a little bit in their own world, and embrace what else is out there. The most challenging part of my job now during our COVID shutdown has been helping our students have access to the technology they need to succeed. We're completely remote until after Christmas, so many of our students don't have devices. Um, it's been eye-opening how many don't even have Wi-Fi in their homes, so it's been a tremendous challenge helping the district get these devices and the technology into the kids' hands so that they can come to school when we're completely remote learning. 
Right now there are so many challenging parts of this job. In particular, we have to wear the mask all day. Um, we have to think about lockdown drills. If there's, you know, somebody comes into the school, how do we socially distance our kids while keeping them safe from a pandemic? Um, it's extremely complicated. The most challenging part about my job is, um, you know, I teach social studies and, and there's a lot of different perspectives out there, there's different points of view, and just making sure that students have, um, have access to all of those different perspectives and, and develop a respect for opinions that differ from their own. My teaching environment here in Jamestown is that I work in a school building uh, with 5th through 8th graders and this is considered to be a middle school and that philosophy means that we work on teams of teachers. So each team has anywhere from 80 to 100 students that we see daily, I should say in 7th and 8th grades because we're departmentalized. So I only teach English language arts. But on my team, I have, there's also a math teacher, a social studies teacher, and a science teacher. And we get to meet daily to talk about students and any issues that are arising with the students. We talk about celebrations as well. And then we make a point to contact parents with any concerns slash good news. I know in our school in particular, we're very diverse. We have students born all around the world. We have a great a pretty large population of Middle Eastern born students. So they come here and, and they are now learning English to read and write it. But, and many of them are also going to school for the first time because in their native countries they did not attend school. So I think American schools are um, kind of a microcosm of our entire society, kind of a melting pot. What I love about my job in particular, because I teach English, is I can teach any content. So I can teach science, I can teach social studies if I wanted to. And so the students get a deeper understanding of that. Um, we spend a lot of time around the theme of injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere, which was um, said by Martin Luther King Jr. And so I love that we can bring that in through both of our contents and have students um, study different time periods in history and look for injustice and how they can fight um, against that and hopefully, again, really try to change the world for the better. I love seeing the students, especially now after not having seen kids in person for four months. Um, they all just bring their personalities to the classroom and sometimes they can be challenging personalities, but there's always some joy to be found in each of those students and their personalities. I love every single aspect of my job, even the challenging parts. Actually, I think I kind of thrive in those challenging parts. I love spending time with my students. I love getting to know them as people. I love helping families overcome challenges they might have. I love when kids don't think they can do something and then we do something in the classroom and they're like, wow, I really could do that. Um, there's no career, no place where you have such a, a tremendous impact on young lives that you do as a teacher. I love every second of coming here. We are really trying to dispel the notion that the United States is the only country that's important. Every country is important and the citizens of every country are important. So learning about only the United States isn't an option anymore because we're a global society and we should care about each other. And it also means, you know, um, looking at other people in other countries and other cultures and looking to see what they're doing right so that we can bring it back here and implement those things um, in the United States. Um, we struggle just like, just like they do. We, we have difficulties in, in the things that we do and, and how we approach our day. You know, it's not that in America everybody has everything and they're, and they're well prepared for school. It's, it's still a struggle for us and we have to find ways to continue to connect with those students. We really do care about our students as entire people, not just, you know, an ELA student or a math student. I also am very proud that American teachers have the power and, and really the courage to speak up and advocate for their students even on a government level. It's not unusual for us to attend rallies and protests and to contact congressmen and senators to, to just advocate for doing what's right for kids in schools because 
isn't that the whole point? 